What's going on guys? Talko back again. Hope you are fantastic today and welcome back to another Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach video. Today we're going to be reacting live to all of the 16 CDs scattered around the mall. So on a live stream that is literally live right now, I'm recording it live, everybody's in the chat. We found 14 of the CDs scattered around the mall. I will do a list in the description of the locations of all of the CDs. However, the last two are bugged. You can't access the last two CDs at the moment because they're in L Chips Arcade and the prize counter area. You can't use Glamrock Freddy currently in that area, but it's bugged. If you try and do it, you glitch out the map and it's game over. You get stuck, soft locked. So you can't access the last two at the moment. But yeah, I had a lot of fun on today's stream. Now a video. Thank you so much for supporting the series of Security Breach. This is probably going to be my last gameplay video until future DLC. Or unless something else is found. Um, but my future videos will probably be like summary videos, theory videos, stuff like that. This is it. This is the last gameplay video until a year's time we play the DLC or something. Uh, we will be doing our live reactions to all 16 CDs right now. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. I'm looking forward to reacting to them for the first time ever. Vanessa, how are you feeling today? Vanessa! You look a little tired. Hmm. Well, it's been a while since we last spoke. How's your anxiety been? You did so well with your calming protocols when we first worked together. Are you still using those? Yes. Oh, is this like a, okay, a therapist? Well, now I understand there's a new issue. It came on just recently, rather suddenly. Can you tell me about it? What issue? I've been doing my job. I come in and sit at my desk and do my work. Yes, yes, of course you do. Your performance reviews are good. But a routine check of your online history has revealed that you've spent quite a bit of time with someone in an encrypted conversation. We have transcripts, and I've read them. But it's not clear what you're talking about in these conversations. I can't make sense of it. You must be getting something from these that I'm not getting, right? Who are you talking to in these? No one. Sometimes I talk with Lewis. He's in the marketing department. He's nice, I guess. Yes, I see Lewis here. But there's someone else. Oh, damn. Okay. She is talking to... Glitch trap. She's talking to glitch trap. She's talking to me as well. Call me nice. I'm joking. So the first one, it's a therapist, guys, by the looks of things. Um, and the therapist is asking her how work's going. Something's happened. She says her workmate, Lewis, is nice. and, and But uh, the therapist says, no, not Lewis. You're talking to somebody else. Um, and I think that is glitch trap. So she's having a conversation with glitch trap or something like that. I don't freaking know. Maybe this was when she used to work at the VR company. Round two. Good morning. Isn't it a pretty day? No? What's the matter? Oh, right. Too bright. I'll pull the shades. Better? When the shades pulled, it feels like we're in a cubbyhole or a cave. Yeah? Hmm. So you're not talking to me again today. This isn't all that productive, you know. Don't you think the sessions are more successful when you talk to me? You know everyone associated with this company gets performance reviews, right? When my sessions don't get results, my reviews aren't very good. If you don't want to talk for your own sake, how about for mine? You don't want me to get in trouble, do you? I could be put in the corner for a time out. Yeah, you think that's funny, huh? Oh, damn. So this therapist works for Fazbear Entertainment? That's what it implied. Or she, she's she got a, a, like, a, a deal with Fazbear Entertainment to uh, work with their employees or something. And she said, like, if I don't get it right, the company's going to uh, tell me off. So it looks like the therapist is working for Fazbear Entertainment. Or she might not even be a therapist. She might not even be a therapist. She might be like an experiment doctor working for Fazbear Entertainment. We don't know yet because she hasn't said, oh, I'm a therapist. Ready? Next one. Hi. Go ahead. 
sit down. I don't know you. What happened to... Oh, we'll get to know each other in no time. I've read through all your files, so I feel like we've been talking for weeks. I feel like I know your dad, too. Bill, right? Your dad's name was Bill? Bill! I'm sorry, what did you say? I try to do what I'm supposed to do. I know you do. Your supervisor notes that you follow instructions perfectly. Your dad made you follow instructions, didn't he? I'm talking about the custody battle between your mum and your dad. Your dad didn't play fair, did he? He used to make your mum look bad in court. I'm so sorry that happened to you. Do you want to talk about how that felt? I suppose I don't need you to tell me it felt bad to have a parent scare you into saying things that weren't true. He manipulated you. It wasn't your fault. It's really sad, but it's common for one parent to use their child to hurt the other parent. I know your mom after she lost the custody case. I was supposed to be a good girl. What happened to her had nothing to do with you, even though it was your testimony that did it. Was that testimony true? No, I didn't think so, but your dad is to blame, not you. Oh my god. Okay, so first off, there's a new therapist, and Vanessa's like, who are you? I don't even know you. So another therapist is trying to talk to Vanessa. Uh, so that's uh, another thing, switching therapists. Bill. So Vanessa's dad is called Bill, and she had a mom, and there was a custody battle, and Bill manipulated Vanessa to say the wrong things in court. So Bill keeps Vanessa and then her, her mom goes to prison or something or um, she can't see her anymore. Something like that. Bill is short. Bill can be short for William, guys. It, it's possible, but you're telling me that William Afton had another daughter called Vanessa. I don't know, man. Yeah, that's what I mean. William would be... William's been dead for years and years, yeah. William has been inside a spring trap for over 30 years. You're not going to talk to me? No? What's the problem? Oh, the flowers? Yes, these are particularly fragrant today, aren't they? I'll move them. <laughs> there. Now, let's see. What are you looking at? You're amazingly alert, aren't you? All right, well... I'd like to have you tell me about yourself, but I can see that you're not going to do that. Or are you? All right then. If you aren't going to talk to me, I'll just go by these notes. You just sit there and be comfy. Or not. That chair doesn't really fit you, does it? Well, this won't take long. Let's see. Your previous counselor is no longer available. Does that bother you? No? You don't look surprised to see me sitting here instead of your last therapist. Well, then, let's get to it. I'll admit that some of what's in your file is a little surprising. Overall, you don't come across as a troublemaker. But if you read between the lines... It's clear that you have a little rebellious side, right? And I'm surprised by your knowledge of computers. You're something of a phenom. Do you know what that word means? It means you have unusual skill, like a hacker. I assume you know what a hacker is, yes? Do you think of yourself as a hacker? Yeah, so at first, guys, when the therapist said you don't fit in that chair, I thought, oh, my God, it's a little kid. But then people in the chat just said, how has a little kid got a job? The therapist just said to Vanessa that she's really good at hacking. Makes sense, because Vanny in the game hacks all the animatronics and turns them against everybody, uh, turns them against the Gregory. Um, so, yeah, there you go. Makes perfect sense. Next one. Good morning, Vanessa. Let's jump right in, shall we? 
I got a message last night about you, and I have to be honest, it was upsetting. Apparently, the IT department has put together a pretty lengthy report chronicling non-job-related communications that have been coming to your computer. The fact that you're still doing something obviously not work-related on the job is disturbing enough, but what bothers me about what I read is that the messages you're getting seem very manipulative in nature. Do you know who I'm talking about? I get a lot of messages from friends. I like when Lewis writes to me. He's funny. I'm not talking about Lewis. You know who I'm talking about. Why won't you open up about it? What you might not know is that this person who's been sending you messages has been hacking into your personal files too. These are the same files I have here. These files are full of details about your life. Do you know what that means? I'm not in the tech department. I just type on the computers. I know that. But what matters here is that this person who is contacting you knows a lot about you. Lots of people know more than I do. Sometimes I need to listen. Okay. So, now, guys, after hearing that, Glitch Trap has been contacting Vanessa. Probably through FNAF VR. Uh, and then got out and then hacked into her emails and stuff. And Vanessa is now talking to Glitchtrap. The more I think about this, I don't think William Afton's uh, Vanessa's dad anymore. It could still be. But you've got to think, why would the therapist mention that Glitchtrap went into her personal details? I think Glitchtrap is manipulating Vanessa or something. And it's definitely Glitchtrap. It's definitely Glitchtrap contacting Vanessa. But think about it again. Glitch Trap has gone through Vanessa's personal files all of the past. It could be that Glitch Trap is manipulating Vanessa now using those personal details. Maybe pretending to be Bill or something like that. We don't know yet. I'll keep going. But it's nice to think about. Good morning. It's good to meet you. I've read your files, so I'm up to speed on what you and your previous therapists have worked on. Bloody hell! Another sure. one. You can have a candy. I'll have one too. Okay. You look chill sitting there like that. Not a care in the world, huh? All right. Well, I'd like to start by talking about your parents. What happened to them and you? It was tragic. But when I looked through the notes, I didn't get a sense that you've processed that emotionally. When I read your account of what happened, it came across as, well, more of an objective rather than a subjective narrative. Oh, sorry. You don't know what that means, do you? What I mean is that the way you told the story is more like you were reading something from a book than you were talking about your own past. That makes me think you've cut yourself off from it. Is that right? Not sure? Well, I see in your file that you spend a lot of time by yourself and are good at self-dialogue. You know what I mean? Asking yourself questions and getting answers. So maybe you should ask yourself how you really feel about your past. Maybe you should give yourself a chance to really look at what happened and let yourself be upset about it. So you can let it go. So each therapist is a different timeline. That's what it seems like it's saying here. Hi, Vanessa. Would you like a candy? Butterscotch today. No, thank you. Those have 35 calories a piece. Okay, that doesn't sound like a well, kid. They taste good to me. Okay, I thought we could do something today that will help us get to know one another better. It looks like you've never taken an ink blot test, right? No? Okay. Then I'm going to show you some ink blots, like this one. And I want you to tell me the first thing it makes you think of. Here we go. What do you see here? A treehouse. Hmm, it does look sort of like a treehouse, doesn't it? Do you like treehouses? I like to sit outside and read. That's good. Now, what about this one? 
A beetle. Really? Looks like a face to me. That's very interesting. Oh my god. Okay, let's keep going, let's keep going, let's keep going. Have you thought more about what we talked about? In our last session, you told me you were sad and scared about what happened to you. I suggested you write down exactly what made you so sad and scared. Did you do that? You know, I work with people of all ages, from little kids to the very elderly, and everyone reacts to tragedy differently. Tragedy always leads to a feeling of loss. It's a hole that feels funny, right? Yeah, so if you could process those feelings, how do you think it would affect your fantasies? Would you keep them in the way they are? Okay, I'm noticing that too. There's some tapes where there's nobody, no, nobody talks back to the therapist, and then Vanessa does. What are you doing? Oh, you like those? I do too. They smell so sweet, don't they? Apparently, the janitor on this floor has a garden and has been putting bouquets in the offices here for years. Do you ever grow things? No. I work a lot. I know you do. Maybe more than you should. More free time would do you good. Do you have a hobby? No? Perhaps we could find one for you. Like a sport. No? Hmm. I have a craft space in my basement. Maybe I could come up with something you could learn to do. I don't like dark basements. Oh, damn. So this Vanessa doesn't like dark basements, apparently. 71 is Vanessa and 46 is... 71 always responds, funny state. 71 is Vanessa, 46 is child. I'd say make yourself comfortable, but I think you already are. It looks like you could take a nap. That's a nice chair, isn't it? According to these message logs, you've been working pretty late over the last couple of weeks. Or not working. Are you ready to talk about who you're interacting with? From what I can see here, the interaction is getting more serious. Is it distracting you from your work? My work is important. There's a non-disclosure agreement. Okay, so I saw 71 and that was Vanessa. Good morning, so, Vanessa. Vanessa again. Well, I can't blame you for looking out the window instead of listening to me. It's a gorgeous day, isn't it? I like the blue sky. Hmm, so do I. Now, let's see what we can get done on this nice sunny day. Okay, here we go. I know part of your job requires you to do online searches, but a routine audit of your search history has revealed that you're doing a little private searching on company time. Is that right? I get breaks. That's true. So, on your breaks, it looks like you were shopping for a costume. You purchased some fake fur material. What are you gonna make? What was that? Did you say the costume is a secret? Why is that? I can't talk about this. He said he would always be watching. He could be here or there or anywhere in between. Are you talking about your dad? Have those feelings come up again? I hate sounding like a broken record, but this is something you really need to resolve if you're ever going to be happy. I have! I compartmentalized him. He's locked away. No, that's not what I mean. You can't just ignore an issue. You have to face your memory of the experiences and process them so you can let it go. So you don't get triggered anymore. You can use a sort of self-dialogue to release these things. I don't like doing that. Hmm. Well, okay. We'll get back to that. I'd really like to know something about this costume. What's it for? Okay, that was a big one. So, she's making the Vanny costume. It seems like she's now fully, like... 
in with a glitch trap at this point where she's saying now like oh he's, he could be here he could be anywhere so at this point now i think glitch traps basically took full control of vanessa and then the therapist said are you talking about your dad but do you think it's the therapist mistaking her saying that that it's a dad rather than glitch trap do you know what i mean i understand you'll be transferring to a different location soon i'll be sorry to see you go i think we've been making progress don't you you can request to come back and speak with me more on your own time though did you know that our sessions don't have to be company mandated i have all sorts of clients vanessa i don't just work with corporations I work with individuals and small groups. I even work in schools. I'm wherever I'm needed. I'm needed somewhere else now. Thank you. Oh God. Yep, so that is fully possessed Vanessa now, guys. Or Vanny, whatever. Vanessa, it's literally Vanessa because she says Vanessa. That she she needs she she got to go somewhere else now. Yeah, so it is it is the Freddy Fazbear uh, Fazbear Entertainment uh, therapist, and Fazbear Entertainment have hired her to talk to employees and stuff, specifically Vanessa. She's needed somewhere else. You know where she's gone. Next. When I'm getting to know a new client, I like to start by finding out directly from them what they like to do. How do you spend all the time you have? Nothing. Well, how do you feel about sports? You like sports? Yeah? No? Oh, I get it. You like to watch them, but not play them. You like being inside, don't you? I get that. Lots of weird stuff outdoors, isn't there? Yeah, I understand. Well, I hate to do this right off the bat, but I've been directed to ask you about this. Apparently, I'm the fourth therapist you've had. And apparently, all three of your former therapists have gone missing. Or, two of them are missing. I don't want to scare you, but I have to tell you that one of them was found dead. That doesn't seem to upset you. Well, then I guess I'll go ahead and tell you that the woman's body was pretty messed up. It looked like it was mangled by machinery. That doesn't bother you either? Hmm. It's all pretty strange, I think. I'm not clear on the circumstances. Apparently the police don't have any evidence. How does all of this make you feel? Maybe I should be watching my back. Yeah, that's funny, isn't it? Okay, shall we move on to something lighter? Oh my god! So, yeah, she's killed them. She's killed the therapists. The weird thing is, that is the separate number 46. This is the one who doesn't talk. Next. Do you know 46. a place called Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizzaplex? I'll take your silence as a yes. And besides, I know you know it. Because the technicians who work for Pizzaplex know you. Or rather, I guess it would be better to say that they think they do. They report that they've caught you on camera, or at least it appears to be you. Nothing to say about that? Well, the techs are convinced that you've hacked into their system many times. Although, I'll admit I don't see any proof here. Seems like they have more of a gut feeling than fact. But apparently, the hacks are causing all kinds of problems. Hmm. You get a kick out of that? The idea of techs running around like chickens with their heads cut off? Yeah, that's a funny image, isn't it? But seriously, I have to say that I think it's weird that you'd spend so much time in such a busy, social place. You seem like more of a loner to me. Lots of time by yourself instead of with friends. Lots of time talking to yourself. Right? Is it the electronics you like? I saw in your file that you have developed software programs that talk to you and repeat phrases, right? The program asks you questions and prompts you for responses. It's kind of like your own self-therapy, isn't it? 
Another way of talking to yourself to work things out, right? When I saw some of your recent encrypted conversation logs, that's what I thought I was looking at. It felt like I was watching someone go back and forth in their own head. But the text found something that's different than that. When I read what they found, at first, I thought I was looking at more examples of you just talking with yourself. Then I realized it was different. When I study this, it sounds like there is someone else responding to you. Who is it? Oh, 46 is Vanessa. Yeah, but it's Vanny. I think 46 is Vanny and 71 is Vanessa or whatever. Yeah, 46 is Vanny, 71 is Vanessa. Whether they're the same people, I don't know. Elizabeth, to be fair, does have blonde hair and green eyes, guys. Just saying. But, you know, she died in baby, right? Guys, it's going to be something super complicated, like the, the novels where William Afton made a clone of Elizabeth Afton or something like that. I really hope it's not clones and stuff like that that William Afton made, um... William Afton made an, uh, made Elizabeth Afton again. That's how it is in the books, guys. In the in the trilogy books, um, William Afton makes a new Charlie or something like that. I don't know. And it's she looks real and she uses an illusion disc or something like that. The la apparently, the last two are both Vanny, guys. The last two are both Vanny. So let's react to those. They're both Vanny. Uh, Forty six. So let's react to the the the, the last two. I saw some inkblot test results in your file. I like inkblot tests. You want to do one? Yes? This one. What do you see? What? You want to hold it? Okay. You think it's a mask? It reminds you of a mask? Like a disguise? Yeah, I can see that. You like the idea of being disguised? Disguises let you be sort of invisible, don't they? You can get away with almost anything when you're invisible, can't you? <laughs> yeah, you like that idea, huh? Well, okay, moving on. I have another report we need to talk about. Apparently, the techs were reviewing communications going in and out of this building, and they came across some interesting things. They say you were in communication with someone, or maybe something. Pretty strange. What do you think about that? Nothing? Well, the techs say it looked to them like it was an attempt to manipulate you, or maybe to lure you somewhere. There, that's better. On this side of the desk, I can see your eyes. Thing is, when I read the communications, I get something different out of them. I don't think you're being manipulated here. I think you're the one doing the manipulating. No comment? Huh? Okay. Then how about this? I have this still shot the text pulled from the security footage that recorded you in the pizza plex. That's you, isn't it? I know this image is distorted, but I think it looks like you. And you're not alone here. You're talking to someone. Or something. It's hard to tell. What are those things? They almost look like rabbit ears. What? You find that amusing? Well, I guess it is. Oh, damn. Okay. Yeah, she was at the pizza plex and she got caught on camera. And apparently there's still rabbit ears and the camera glitched. And apparently she's the one who's manipulating. I got another message from the text at the pizza plex. I'm afraid it's about you again. The techs have been struggling to fix some serious glitches with the robots. 
I'm not sure what exactly is wrong, except that it's making the robots more eerie than entertaining. You like that? Eerie instead of entertaining? Thanks, but it's really not that funny. Apparently, the glitch extended beyond the robots. It went system-wide. It began infecting all the machines, and when the techs traced the glitch back to its origin, it led them to you. I'm, I'm not going to pretend to understand everything I'm reading here, but what I get is that the system-wide glitch was like a cascade that was broadcasting a very dangerous message. While the techs were trying to reprogram the system to remove the glitch, the source of the glitch shifted. You'll have to excuse me, I'm not all that familiar with computer programming, so I might get this wrong, but what I understand is that the glitch stopped being a glitch and turned into an intentional set of subroutines that were aimed at creating the same thing the glitch created. Those subroutines seem to have come from you. Can you explain that? Listen, I'm on your side here. Our sessions are just between you and me. The techs can't prove what they think, so you're not in trouble. I just thought you could tell me what you're trying to do. Maybe if we could get to the bottom of that, it could help you. What do you think? Still not talking? All right. Well, then let's do this. Why don't we talk about the research I did in your past, shall we? Some therapists think they should only focus on information they get from their clients, but some therapists, like me, think it's helpful to find out about clients from other sources. Wanna guess what I found out when I looked into the tragedy of your past? All that stuff about your parents? You aren't even gonna look at me? Fine. You can look at the floor all you want. But it won't change the fact that none of what you said in your file about your parents was true. The truth is, you had great parents. A great childhood. Why did you lie? Look at me. Tell me why you lied. You... Well, I can understand why you might feel angry about the way I just confronted you. Why don't we come back to this another day? You're shaking your head as though that's not going to happen. So, Vanessa, William, guys, William Afton's not Vanessa's dad, okay? It's not Vanessa's dad. So, that's a relief, okay? William Afton is not Vanessa's dad. She is being tricked and hijacked to make it think, to make her brain think that, um, that that's the truth. That her, her brain's been hijacked to believe that her past, William Afton was a dad. Out of all of this, we get some lore about William Afton, and William Afton did have an argument with his wife and uh, uh, William Afton's wife lost custody to all of her, all of his kids. So that's why William Afton's a single parent, okay? And there was a tragedy. So I think that maybe William Afton did kill her, kill his wife or something. Or locked her away, I don't freaking know. Those were all of the 16 CDs scattered around the mall. Let me know your thoughts, please. You can see from my reaction from the first tape to the end tape, my theory changed a lot, okay? The CDs are separated to two separate beings, Vanessa and Vanny. Number 71 on the CD player is Vanessa, and number 46 is Vanny. You can see on the CD player uh, that it's always 71 or 46. 71, the therapist always says Vanessa, and Vanessa talks back. Number 46, it seems like the therapist is talking to the person in the session like a child, and they don't talk back. They don't talk back. They don't, they never ever say anything back to the therapists. It's very, very confusing, right? Because this is gonna make a lot of people think, oh my God, 71 is Vanessa, 46 is Vanny, 
So that means that they're two separate people, that they are twins, that they are clones and stuff like that. It's a hard one, guys. It could be true. There's, there's nothing against that theory. There's nothing against that being true. So you've got that side to the argument, and then you've got the other side, where Vanny, she can be herself as Vanessa, but there are times where Glitch Trap, where Glitch Trap takes control of her, and that's when she becomes Vanny, okay? Vanessa says that she loves blue skies. Vanessa says that she doesn't like eating candy because of the calories. She doesn't like the basement. She doesn't like basements and stuff like that. Number 46 likes eating candy. Uh, they laugh about uh, things going wrong at the pizzeria. They laugh about the therapists getting murdered. They are very, very opposite from each other, okay? We do know, though, through the CDs, that over time, Vanessa seems to get more and more uh, losing control of her mind because she starts talking about somebody taking over her mind and that somebody's listening, somebody's watching, aka Glitch Trap, because Glitch Trap at that point is inside of her head. Also with Vanessa, she seems surprised when there's a new therapist in the room. Like she, oh, I've got a new therapist already, what's going on? But number 46 isn't surprised by those things. They aren't surprised that things are going wrong in the pizzeria. They're not surprised that there's new therapists. Um, they don't even react to the fact that three of her therapists are missing and one of them's been mauled, um, completely crushed by, uh, uh, by machinery. And they don't seem surprised by that. Obviously, it's because number 46 has murdered the therapists and they're the one who's causing chaos at the pizzeria which is Vanny. So I'm not going to go too off tangent with this, guys, because it could be for another video, or we'll just let MatPat solve it. But in these CDs, there is a clear indication that number 71 is Vanessa, and number 46 is somebody else, Vanny. You guys can decide whether that means that they are two separate people, or... Vanessa's just one person, and it's one side where she can be herself as Vanessa, and other days where Glitch Trap uh, takes over her mind, and she cannot do anything because she's not in control. She can't even speak uh, in the therapy session. She doesn't even she doesn't even say anything. She just laughs or giggles and acts very childlike. If you listen through the tapes, um, you know she seems to be very childlike when she's not saying anything. Uh, in the 46 CDs. I tried to dig a little bit deeper about that. Maybe Va maybe Vanny is, yes, possessed by a glitch trap. But what if glitch trap is also Elizabeth Afton as well? What if Vanny is being possessed by Elizabeth Afton? It's like I said, Vanny seems to be very childlike. Still very, you know, brutally murdering people. But that's just like what, what Scrap Baby was doing. You know, Scrap Baby in Pizza Simulator was trying to kill everybody and making her dad proud of what she's become. She's become a murderer. I could just imagine that happening where the possession is actually Elizabeth Afton and she's just trying to save her dad and trying to uh, get more murders, a, mur a bigger murder spree. The lie was... Um, her mom and dad split up uh, when she was younger and her dad's name was Bill. And Bill won the custody of her and the other kids and her mom went somewhere else. Whether she died or got murdered or just vanished, we don't know that. But apparently the therapist found out that it's a lie. Vanessa had a really nice childhood. She had great parents. So that means whoever is inside Vanny has said that lie about William Afton being uh, her dad. And the only person I could think of being that evil and manipulative is Elizabeth Afton. Because if you guys, spoilers about the Fazbear Fright stories, uh, Elizabeth Afton is in that as well, uh, Eleanor. And she's a very evil spirit, and she's even stronger than William Afton. So, yeah. Maybe they've done the similar story in this where... Elizabeth Afton's came back with glitch trap and stuff like that. The 16 CDs uh, with a therapist. The therapist changes over time. The first double digits are always 71 or 46. We can now confirm that number 71 is Vanessa and number 46 is Vanny. 
we think anyway. It's never confirmed, but they talk about a rabbit head and stuff like that, a rabbit mask. It's never confirmed, but it's pretty obvious because number 46 talks about a rabbit mask and wanting a mask, stuff like that. So 46 has to be Vanny. 71 is Vanessa. They clearly have two different personalities, whether that means that they are two separate people or it's glitch trap influencing Vanessa's thoughts and, you know, brain. So that's up for you guys to decide. Do you guys think they are two separate, they're, they're twins or sisters or it's a clone or it's a robot? And the final speculation, do you think Elizabeth Afton, the spirit of Elizabeth Afton plays a part of this at all? Uh, scrap baby, the aggressive scrap baby, the spirit of uh, Elizabeth. Do you think that she's playing a part of Vanessa's possession as well? Let me know your thoughts, guys. I know it's a little bit complicated, but I think with a sequel or a DLC or a prequel, I think we'll start to learn more in more detail what the hell's going on with Vanessa. Uh, is it is it a separate person or is it glitch trap taking over her mind? We'll have to wait and see. Take care, lots of love, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.